Today, we'll do some in painting with differential diffusion. And at the end, we'll even do multiple prompts in object manipulation simultaneously. We'll start with the default workflow. I've just rearranged it and replaced the save image node with the preview image node. I've also rerouted my noodles to a group at the top of the workflow. We'll see how this cleans up our workspace later. First, we'll replace the preview window with the preview bridge node. Then we'll add a Gaussian blur mask to soften the edges on the mask and make them blend in better with our image. Then we'll add a convert mask to image node so we can visualize our mask. This is an optional feature that is just to illustrate the blurring effect of the mask for this tutorial. Connect the nodes and put them into a group. I labeled mine mask, and I also extended the noodles at the top by adding more reroute nodes. Each reroute node is colored to indicate its source. Next, we'll set up the in-painting nodes for differential diffusion. We'll begin with the in-paint model conditioning node, which will feed into a second K sampler node. We'll also need a clip text encode node for our positive prompt to tell the program what we want to in-paint into the masked area. And of course, we'll need a differential diffusion node. Now, let's connect everything up. The clip from our LoRa loader connects to the second positive prompt text node that we added, and the conditioning output terminal connects to the positive input terminal on the in-paint node. The information from the model flows through the differential diffusion node and onto the K-sampler. We'll attach the original negative prompt to the in-paint node. For more control over the in-painting, you can add a second negative prompt to the workflow here if you want. I usually don't. Connect the image out from the preview bridge and the Gaussian blur mask to the in-paint model conditioning node via the mask-to-mask -mask terminals. Connecting the in-paint model conditioning node to the K-sampler is fairly straightforward. Lastly, we'll connect a VAE decoder node to the K-sampler. The decoder will need a VAE connection also. We're using the reroute from the baked-in VAE of our checkpoint model. We'll need a preview node so we can see the resulting image generation. I like to place the preview window close to the node where we'll be doing our masking. It makes it easier to see everything without having to scroll or pan through the workflow. Of course, you can always move the nodes around to have them all snuggle up on one screen. That's just another one of Comfy UI's advantages over other image generating schemes. Be sure to set the seed values to the same numerical value, otherwise you may have problems aligning the images generated within the mask to the original image, and set it to the fixed option so that it stays the same. I find the easiest way to do this is to simply copy and paste the seed value from the first case sampler to the second case sampler. That way I don't make any type of mistakes, which, I hate to admit, happens way too often. We'll generate an image of Chris Hemsworth as Conan the Barbarian in a Rocky Canyon cowboy pose. Having the in-painting nodes all in one group makes it easy to deactivate or bypass them while we generate the image we want. If you change the seed number while you're working to get the image you like, don't forget to go back and change the seed on the second case sampler. To create a mask, Right-click on the Preview Bridge node and select Open in Mask Editor. You can adjust the color and size of your brush with slider, or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to adjust the size of the brush. The mask doesn't have to be exactly fitted to the image. It just has to cover the area we want to change, and the blurred edges of the mask will ensure that the end painting blends with the original image. Click the Save to Node button to exit the mask editor. We can click on the Q prompt button to regenerate the image and generate a view of the mask. This step is just to illustrate the mask in the tutorial. Now we'll reactivate the in-painting group by right-clicking on the group 
and clicking on the Set Group Nodes to Always option in the Group menu. We'll enter our in-painting prompt of Aviator Sunglasses, and we'll generate our new image. If it's not exactly like you want, simply change your prompt and regenerate, like always. The primary image will stay the same because the seed is fixed. We don't have to change the seed on the second case sampler to get a different result. Just changing the prompt will result in a new image within the mask. And there we have Chris Hemsworth as Conan wearing a cool pair of sunglasses. Not bad, I like it. Pretty cool, actually. You're not limited to only making one change at a time within painting. We'll add a second mask to our image in the mask editor. This time we'll mask out the area where he has a boring gray chain and pendant. We'll add to our prompt a gold chain necklace with a medallion. Then we'll regenerate the image without changing any settings. Very nice. Next, we'll mask out his upper torso and change the prompt to aviator sunglasses and wearing a blue Nike t-shirt. And there we have Chris in sunglasses and a Nike t-shirt. But I'd like to change the t-shirt a bit. In order to do so, I can simply change the steps from six to eight and regenerate. I can make another subtle change by simply changing the denoise setting from 1 to 0.86. By experimenting with different settings on the steps and denoise values, you can make an almost infinite number of subtle changes to the resulting image. Well, not infinite, but you get the point. Play around with in-painting, and if you're like me, you'll have a great time discovering all the possibilities that it opens up. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our many upcoming tutorials and commentaries.